Hello, good evening, guys. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Fine, thank you. Good evening. Excellent. Good evening. So, guys, we're going to continue today with our uh, class, and I'm going just to open very quickly uh, the the PowerPoint presentation, and then I'm going to pass the attendance. I could see here that we have still pending two exercises, right? One is from yesterday, and the other one is from, um, I think it was, it, I think it's 1.2, the one that we didn't resolve yesterday, but today we're going to do it, and also uh, 2.5, if I am not mistaken. So there we go. I'm going to open it here right now. So guys, we are already in our new month, right? This is the 1st of March, right? We're getting close to our, um, uh, what's the name? Easter holiday, right? Or Semana Santa, as we call it in Spanish. So um, that's getting closer and closer. So we're going to start here. And also, let me open here the attendance. Um, uh, I think it's the spreadsheet. Um, let me see. It's over here. I'm going to leave the um, the uh, platform loading. Give me a moment. Can you see my screen, guys? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. Now I found here your class. Today is March 1st. Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Present. Thank you. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Give me a second. Eh, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Eh, Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Eh, Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Present teacher. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you. José Francisco Peña Peña. Present teacher. Thank you. José Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. José Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Méndez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Sorry, present. Thank you, Rafael. Present, Rodrigo. Thank you. Thank you, Rodrigo. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Jen C. Oh, thank you, Sandra. Jen C. Uh, Marlene León López. Present, teacher. Thank you. And Sulma Beatriz Perez Cardames. Present. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for being on time. Now we're going to continue with our class. Okay. So as you can see, the platform has already loaded. <laughs> La pongo a cargar temprano porque si no, no carga cuando estamos queriendo entrar al ejercicio. So session number three. Still we're working in um, friends and family unit. And yesterday we were working with gerunds, right? Um, we were discussing the, the different uh, 
verbs, right, that we use whenever we want to, um, for example, use a verb right after them, right? Uh, I think we were able to complete all the exercises. Not pretty sure if that happened. I think we did. Uh, also, I shared a list with you, right, of verbs that can be followed uh, followed by gerunds. Not every verb is going to be like that. Also, we were saying that whenever we have a, um, we have a preposition, right after that preposition, we need to use a verb with ing form, right? And uh, what else? Yesterday, also, we talked a little bit about a clauses, right? And those clauses are these clauses about a noun closes after B, right? We discussed in a little bit, but I'm going to go back here, right, to the manual. So in the manual, we have verbs followed by gerunds. After that, we have also uh, some uh, phrases that we can use, right, whenever we want to express, right, um, that uh, something you know, it's bothering us, etc. So take a look at here. We are going to get some expressions from um, from here. So for for example, enjoy, right? So enjoy, it's a verb that we can use. And uh, right after it, we need to add ing, right? Avoid, avoid expressing. Another verb that we can use with ing, mind, right? stand or can stand, love, hate, which both those three verbs or those three expressions can be used with either an adjective, I mean, either a gerund or an infinitive. And also the last one, insist, feel or feel like, into, right? So I'm into going out. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué going after into? Because into is a preposition, right? So in this case, whenever we use a preposition, we are going to add that gerund at the end. Let me see. Here, I'm going to stop here, okay? So how have you changed? There is a section in your manual, right, that talks a little bit about this particular topic, right? How have you changed? There are some expressions that we have here, guys, that we can use to talk about, you know, uh, the way we have changed through time, right? So in this case, we have here, I used to be, I used to be meaning solía ser, right? So I used to be, and then you um, type something there, right? I used to be, um, what? Let me see, let me think of an adjective or an example. I uh, used to be um, quiet, right, uh, in the past, but now, but now, um, um, up, I'm very outgoing, right, an example, right, or it could be the opposite, right, let's say it was my sister, so she, oops, she used to be serious, right, but now, uh, but now she's very talkative. Talkative, right? Talk, talk, talkative. Okay. So I used to be quiet, but now I'm very outgoing. Uh, she used to be serious, but now she's very talkative, right? So in the past, hmm, it was very difficult to have a conversation with her because she was very serious. But now, now she's pretty cool. She's always talking. She's very talkative, et cetera, right? So also there is another option over here, okay? Look, it says, and more, and more, na, na, na. And then we can include something here. And more, and more, um, how can I say this word? And more um, independent now. Let's put it like that. Independent now, right? I enjoy, I enjoy going places by myself, by myself. 
this one is related, you know, probably to me because um, I don't know, I don't know you guys, but in my case, for example, well, I'm married, right? I have a daughter. Um, she's going to turn 15 years old this this year, right, uh, within some months. And since she was a baby girl, right, I remember um, if I had some time uh, when she was at school, I would go by myself, you know, to um, to somewhere. I mean, to have something to eat, um, to um, to have an, some ice cream or um, to go shopping, you know, I would probably dedicate one or two hours just for me. Right. So in the past, I uh, before when I was, you know, single and when I didn't have kids, I wouldn't do that. So I'm more independent now and I enjoy going places by myself. It doesn't mean that you have to go everywhere with everyone. No. Right. You have to also to dedicate some time to yourself, to spend time with yourself because you deserve it. So then another example could be. um, um my friend, right? My friend is more a uh, what? My friend is more discipline. Discipline. Okay, she enjoys um, planning her agenda every day. Right. This is just an example. OK, so my friend is more disciplined now. She enjoys planning her agenda every day. I have a friend. Well, my best friend, uh, we met when we were in in high school in first the first year of high school. And I remember she was very like um messy well, she she would always forget important dates etc so i was kind of like her walking agenda right so i was always reminding her of what she had to do the assignments she had to hand in um the activities that we were assigned etc so i think my friend now it's more disciplined and she enjoys planning her agenda every day right then those are you know describing changes Okay, uh, or how you have changed, right? Those things that you can see now. And then it says describing how you'd like to change. Okay, so I'm interested in, for example, in my case, I'm interested in learning, learning more about human behavior, right? Human behavior. Right. So I'm interested, you know, in those topics related to psychology, right? Probably the, 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 the way the brain works and the reason why we react or we behave the way we do. Right. Because it's important to know, right, um, those um, um, details about our body that uh, sometimes play against, you know, our emotions. So I'm interested in learning more about human behavior, etc. Or you can say something like, um, uh, my uh, mother, right, is interested or interested in learning or in cooking, in cooking. Um, because probably now um, she probably is not a great cook and she would like to uh, change that, right? So I like, right? I like to be more. I like to be more um, quiet, okay? I would like to be more quiet because sometimes I think that I talk a lot, but I mean, talking a lot is not a problem, but talking or revealing more than what you should about yourself and not about other people. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not a gossiper. <laughs> no, about revealing information about yourself. So probably sometimes I reveal too much about myself and, and I should be like more quiet and to be more, um, I think it's, what's the name of this word? Let me see if I can find it in, in the dictionary. Um... No, no creo que sea esta. Give me a second. Uh, bueno, sí, fíjese esta. The word reserve. Pensé que no se podía utilizar, but if you look at the definition, it says reserve. Reserved. 
showed to reveal emotion or opinions kept especially for a particular purpose or person. Restrained, uh -huh. self-contained, okay, more private. Uh -huh. Here we have like words, right? Re re reticent, restrained, quiet, private, self-contained. Uh, so yes, actually kind of, you know, like that. I would like to be more reserved, more private, and just to reveal things, you know, to the right people. So what about you guys? What about you? Please um, uh, create your own sentences, right? And I would like you to use one, I mean, each of these, uh, of the structures that we have, one with used to, one with and more now I enjoy, I am interested in, and I'd like to be more. Okay, so I already gave you my examples. Now it is your turn for you to create your own. Okay, do you have questions? Preguntas, chicos. Questions for those son four sentences one, two, three and four sentences okay um i'm going to give you four to five minutes for you to complete your sentences and when you finish you are going to share them with the class okay you're going to raise your hand and you are going to share them with the class do you have questions guys questions questions going to give you five minutes okay this one is three no mm, cancel five minutes there we go they begin right now if you have any question please what is the meaning be behavior yes behavior is comportamiento or conducta that's behavior. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome.
Okay, guys, time is up. Let me go ahead and listen to your sentences. Are you ready? Are you ready? Or do you need a couple of extra minutes? Okay, Claudia Marcela, thank you very much. Tell me, tell me your examples. Okay. <clears throat> I used to be very, very insecure and shy girl. I remember I didn't talk with anyone. It mm -hmm. was very difficult to me, make friends. Mm -hmm. But now I'm more talkative now. I can make friends. I'm more proactive and visionary. I'm interested in learning about different things, such as emotional intelligence, technology, economy, and so on. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be more secure and resolute person. Okay, more confident, more confident, right? More confident. Uh huh. Excellent. Very good. Actually, I really like all your sentences and that and those changes sound number one, very interested, interesting. I'm sorry. And number two, actually, um, uh, those changes really will take you places. So thank you, Claudia Marcela, for that. What about you, Jose Francisco? Well, in my case, I used to be shy and quiet mm -hmm. and still. <laughs> <laughs> but now I try to speak a little more. Mm -hmm. I would like to be more comprehensive. And also, I would like to be a better listener. Oh, okay. I like that. Uh -huh. Anything else? No, that's that. Okay, very good. <laughs> well, actually, that's cool. I, I read a book. Um, that is called The Slide Age. And, and, and that book says that you have to go little by little, even though you don't see progress right now, but the idea is not to stop doing something. In the end, those little, you know, actions every single day, that contribution you uh, do make to become less shy and less quiet will, you know, help you. And one day you'll see that you will change completely. Thank you very much. And that one about being, being a good listener, that one is very important, right? Because actually um, uh, our friends need, and our family members need someone who can listen to them, right? And sometimes we are very prone to speak and talk and uh, stop them, right? And, and actually, no, we have to be good listeners to pay attention. And after that, we can talk. Thank you. What about you, Sandra? Tell me. Uh, I, I enjoy traveling alone because I have time by myself. Okay, very good. What, okay, so uh, in your case, you enjoy traveling uh, a lot because you enjoy being by yourself. Okay, I like it. Anyone else? Someone else that would like to share the those changes or the changes you would like to see in the future? Anyone? No. Okay. Very good. So now, uh, very quickly, I'm going to move to, oh, well, tell me, Jensi, tell me. Uh, my example is, um, I used to be very serious, but I now I very friendly. Mm -hmm. Um, to call example, mm -hmm. um, I am interest, interested in learning more English and okay. being more disciplined. I like that. Okay. So those are your two examples. Okay. Very good. I like that. I'm interested in learning more um, vocabulary, right? More um, things in English. That's cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, now, let's go ahead and move to the platform, right? Because in the platform, we have uh, the two exercises that we need to resolve. So yesterday, uh, oh, let me just delete my, I'm going to delete my drawings. Okay, there we go. So it is 1.2, if I'm not mistaken, right? Let me go to the chat and let me see. 2.5 and 1.2. I have from yesterday, it's 1.2. Knowledge check, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. 
It says instructions, read the dialogues and complete the sentences. If two answers are possible, write both of them. Separate them both answers using the forward slash. Eso se llama leca o en inglés forward slash. Si está hacia adelante, se llama forward slash. Si está hacia atrás, se llama backward slash. Okay. Remember to use either gerund or infinitive or both is pos if possible. So it says, oh, let me do something before. I'm going to duplicate this one here so I can see both things. 1.2. Give me one moment. There we go. Okay, very good. So Sam isn't happy when he has nothing to do. And Garrett says, I know. It really bothers him. So Sam can't stand. Okay, Sam can stand. So there we have uh, two options, having nothing to do or to have nothing to do. What do you think it's the right answer? Having nothing to do or to have nothing to do? What is the right answer? Yes, Elio? I think that is having nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in your case, you said having nothing to do. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and see if that is correct. Okay, and as you can see here down below, it says that we have the two options, having nothing to do or have nothing to do. Now, let's go and take a look at the presentation, okay? Because in the presentation, you will be able to see that it is correct. Look, it says use the gerund or infinitive form after these verbs, can't stand, love, and hate. With these three expressions, también con like, right? With those four expressions, you can use either a gerund or infinitive. Así que las dos opciones son correctas. Now, let's take a look at the exercise. Number one, okay? It says Adam, I mean, Ada says, Sam isn't, isn't happy when he has nothing to do. Gary, I know it really bothers him. Sam can't stand. So I'm going to take the answer that I got from here and I'm going to include it, okay? Porque son ambas. Si son ambas, acuérdense de agregar una plequita. Vic, I hardly ever go to school parties anymore, June. Me neither. They are not as much fun as they, they used to be. So Vic and June avoid what? What do they avoid? Going, going school party. To school party. Very good, right? Going to school parties. Okay, very good. Going to school to school parties. Okay, what about the next one, Tina? You visit. I mean, you visit your parents on the weekends, don't you? And Leslie says yes. I spend Sundays with them. I'm too busy the rest of the week. So, Leslie prefers. What? Leslie prefers what options? I had tried spending Sundays with her parents, but it doesn't. It didn't work. Ah, okay. But but now let's identify the verb. Okay. So what is the main activity that is mentioned? in the in the sentence you visit your parents on the weekends don't you yes i spend sundays with them i'm to visit the rest of the week leslie prefers to do what bueno en este caso no es to do i'm sorry yes what is the verb what is the action visiting. muy bien visiting who oops sorry leslie prefers visiting her day of day parent mm -hmm. Exactly. So Leslie prefer visiting uh, um, visiting her parents, right? Her parents on the weekend, right? Very good. Excellent. So Leslie prefers visiting her parents on the weekend. Now, what about the next one? 
Tom, are you going to take an Italian class this summer? And Ivy says, yes, I am. I love to learn new languages. So, Abby is into what? Learning. Okay, very good. Abby is uh, into learning what? New language. Very good. New languages, right? Abby, Abby is into learning new languages. Very good. What about the next one? Do you want to go rock climbing with me this weekend? And Sue says, no, I don't know. Rock climbing sounds dangerous. So Sue is worried about what? What is the activity? Climbing. Okay, okay. but ah. going, rock climbing. going rock climbing. Uh -huh. Going rock Climbing, that's the activity, right? Okay, so uh, Sue is worried about going rock climbing. Very good. What about the last one? It says, Josh, what sort of volunteer work do you do for the library, Celia? And Celia says, mm, I love kids. So I volunteer as a children's storyteller on Saturdays. So Celia enjoys what? What is the activity? What is the activity? What is the verb? Working. Voluntary. Ah, okay. Yes, I mean, it's working, but actually the verb is volun. Um, I think it's volunteering. Oops, sorry. Volunteering. Okay. Volunteering, right? As a what? As a children's story talk. Correct. My vol oops, sorry. Volunteering. I said as a children's, right? Children's storyteller. Storyteller. Okay. So that would be the answer, right? So um Celia enjoys volunteering as a children's storyteller. Okay, now let's go ahead and submit our answers. And as you can see. All of them are correct. Okay. So, do you have any questions? Preguntas con este ejercicio, chicos? Questions? Or is it clear? Preguntas? Ninguna. Okay. So, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Number four. Number four. Number four. <laughs> The second time that I I can see the use of uh, is into learning. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I feel strange using into. I remember Evie is into learning, into learning, mm -hmm. like a, the preposition into. Mm -hmm. in, uh, I I was not uh, used to. I, I am not familiar with this uh, preposition mm -hmm. in that in that position. That is my my curiosity, my my new learn uh, sent, my new sentence that I have learned how to use mm -hmm. the is into learning the mm -hmm. In the last class I, I I I saw into using into to. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. No, and 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 that's totally fine. Uh, I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, well, uh, especially because you're asking the question, eh, Eliu. Um, but yes, it, it sounds strange, right? It's kind of weird because uh, we're not used to seeing that particular um, structure, right? But actually, the 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 complete thing or the phrase is be into. Right, so be into means that you are interested in something. Okay, so that's what be into means. And what you have to do is to conjugate the verb be, right? So, uh, and actually, I'm going to share with you what it means. Okay, here in the in the in the chat. So, be into. Okay, we use be into to express enthusiasm, 
or strong interest for something. For example, he's really into his work. So whenever, Elio, whenever we use be into, okay, that's what we are expressing. We're expressing enthusiasm or strong interest for that particular activity or that particular something, right? So whenever you use, oh, for example, I can say I'm into, I'm into um, uh, making collages, right? Because actually I love collagen. I'm into making collages. Making a collage is whenever I use glue, scissors, papers, and I create something, you know, with uh, with die cuts and, and colors and paints, right? So in my case, I'm really, you know, I'm really into making collages. So when I am using this phrase, what I what I'm what I'm actually saying is that guys, I really enjoy, um, I'm, I, I'm really interested or, or it makes me happy, right? So I'm into making collages. So whenever you use it, it's because you want to show enthusiasm, okay? I don't know if I answered your question, Elio. <laughs> okay, see, I even can okay, don't or worry. Mm -hmm. So any other question? Question, guys? Remember, with be into, you have to conjugate the verb first, okay? And after into, we have a gerund, okay? We have a gerund. Right. So now we're going to move to exercise. Oh, you know what? I'm going to share with you this. Le voy a compartir esto en el chat so you can have it in case you need it, okay? So this is number one. This is number two. This is number three. This is number four. Uh, yeah. uh, and this is number five. This is number six. Okay, very good. There we go. Now let's move on to 2.5. So I'm going to set that un poquitito. Así que I'm going to move to the last section here. And let's see. Now we're going to go to the next section. 2.5. Now check. Okay. So it says read the following sentences, and I'm going to duplicate this page so I can have it here and I can see it with you. Uh, it says, it, read the following sentences, notice the words or phrases which are in brackets. Replace them using the following verbs, aggravate, avoid, cause, deal with, identify, ignore, run into, solve. I'm going to uh, repeat them one more time. Aggravate, avoid, cause, deal with identify, ignored, run into, and solve. Okay, so we have all those verbs and actually I will uh, stop sharing the, um, the presentation. Give me a second, I'm going to move from here because I'm going to show you that particular section. Uh, give me a moment. I think I already have it in the presentation. Yes, Elio, tell me. What does say aggravated, aggra aggravated mean? Aggravated. Yeah, aggravate. Uh -huh. So it, it's very similar to Spanish. It's, uh, 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 cuando se siente agraviado, it's like you are affected by something, right? Um, it's like um, probably you are worried, affected by a particular situation. Or in that sense, um, probably it's something that um it's a problem that is bothering you right um aggravate also is como hacer algo más grave right um and, and you know what i'm going to show you the, the definition here okay so it says make a problem or make an injury or make an offense worse or even more serious or annoyed or exasperate someone especially persistently 
For example, when you have, uh, when, when alguien le está insistiendo, right? This person insists and insists and insists in something and you say, no, thank you. No, thank you. So this person is aggravating you. Why? Because the person is exasperating you or it's making you feel annoyed, right? So that's uh, the meaning. And uh, over here, the translations that we have in Spanish is agravar o empeorar. Mm -hmm. Aggravate. And aggravate is the pronunciation in English. Very good. Give me a second. I was looking for that particular, the particular vocabulary. Aquí está. Okay, so later in the lesson, you are going to find this, um, this action, right? So recognizing problems. So all these um, verbs that, you've, that you can find in the manual, right? As it, it says here, these verbs are often used to talk about problems and use the verbs to replace the Bold faced words in phrases in the sentences below. So this is this is just an example, right? As you can see, we have many situations over here um, that are well. First of all, what is the TV doing in the kitchen, right? Secondly, um, why is there a fire in the oven, right? <laughs> look at that float, right, in the sink. Uh, look at that. Um, leak over there right from the ceiling so there are so many situations that so many problems over here but what i want to point out is the fact that we have some vocabulary words okay aggravate avoid cause deal with identify ignore run into and solve all of these phrases can be used with a problem okay so yes uh do you have a question me, the teacher, what's yeah. the meaning of, of run into? Run into, okay. Run into is to encounter, to discover, right? That's run into. For example, whenever you said, oh, I ran into a situation early in the morning with my car, right? Meaning that you had a problem, right? In your, with, with uh, your car. So that's run into. That would be more like, um, Ah, also when you find someone, right? When you find an old friend, you're walking and you say, ah, you know what? Yesterday I ran into my old friend and we were talking a little bit about uh, the latest news, etc. So let me see. Ah, okay, here we have, you know, the definition. It, run into, it's a verb, a verb of, I mean, a phrasal verb. It's mean, it means collide with someone or some, some something. He ran into a lamppost, right? Uh, also reached a level of amount. The company had debts running into millions of dollars. Uh, so meaning escalating, right? And also in Spanish, it could be like tropezar or topar, right? So run into. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now that we um, have a better idea on these type of verbs, let's go ahead and uh, resolve this exercise. This one is 2.5, there we go. Give me a second, I'm going to close the chat. Okay, so let's see. Number one, my friend never does anything about his problems. So what do you think from the, the list that we just studied. What do you think it's going to be the one that will help us? I'm going to put it with this one, okay? So what do you think it's going to be the one that we need? No, I must say. Ignore. Ignore. Okay, very good, excellent. So I'm going to type ignore, pero ignore? Is that the- Ignores. Ah, okay, very good, ignores, because I'm talking about third person singular, right? So my friend ignores his problems. Maria can look at a broken bicycle and find the problem right away. What do you think would be um, the right word that we need? I mean, the, the right verb. Identify. Okay, very good. Excellent. So I'm going to type here identify. What about my sister? My sister is never afraid to try to take care of a difficult problem. What do you think it's going to be the verb we need here?
Look at the list. Deal with. Okay, very good option. Deal with, right? Deal with means to take care of, to manage, to handle that situation, right? What about this one? Number four, Gil Dong always makes his problems worse. <laughs> Aggravated. Exactly, right? Exactly. Aggravated. Aggravate. Um, with this one, with this one, guys, uh, for in some past. reason, uh -huh, for some reason in the platform, it will ask you to have it in past. Okay. So Gil Don always aggravated his problems worst. Okay. Por eso se ve un poco extraño porque tenemos always y always generalmente lo usamos con presente simple, pero en la, en la plataforma tiene como ese, ese error ahí. En vez de S, tiene una D. What about number five? Ruby always follows, follows the recipe closely to prevent problems when she cooks. So, when she cooks, I'm sorry. Prevent. Runs into. Mm, but run into it's to encounter, right? To find. Ah, avoid, sorry, sorry, avoid. avoid. Okay, very good. Avoids, right? So she um always avoids, right? What about number six? Mink, right? Always right. unexpectedly encounters problems when he tries to fix things. That one is run into. Ahora sí, run into, right? When you encounter something. Aquí le han puesto en encounters, pero yo creo que quisieron decir encounters. Bueno, voy a reportar quizás estos dos, estos dos errores, fíjense. Uh -huh. Vaya, vale, tomé la captura y lo voy a guardar acá. Ahí está. Ok. What about the next one, number seven, right? So number seven, Carla, is great at completely fixing any kind of problem at work. What do you think? Solving. Very good, solving, okay. Okay, solving, because she's great at, y como, uy, y como tenemos una preposition, we are going to use a, um, uh, a gerund, solving, right? Al is the kind of student who always makes problems for teachers, right? Cause. Okay, causes, right? Very good. So now I'm going to send my answers. Oh, run into. Ah, se nos olvidó agregar la letra S, sorry. The teacher se equivocó. Oh, I see. Okay, so as you can see, we have all our answers correct, right? And you got a very good idea on uh, what the um, the expression, right, was used for. So ignores means never do anything about that. Uh, find is um, synonym of identified, right? Try to take care of something means to deal with that particular activity. Um, situation. Um, whenever we make our problems worse, we aggravate things, right? Also, prevent is synonym of avoid, right? Uh, unexpectedly encounter means to run into something, right? Completely fixing means to solve something. And all, always, right, whenever we make problems, we cause those problems, okay? So, any question, guys? Questions about this exercise? No? Okay. Uh, do you have questions about the platform? Any other exercise that you think it's difficult to deal with right now? Or any um, anything related to the work that you have been completing in the platform? No one? Okay, very good. So let's continue then with the with the class. Teacher. Yep. Uh, I am. I I like to to talk with you after leaving the the session. Oh, okay, no problem. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. No problem. What about what about the rest, guys? Do you have any questions about the about the platform? 
No? Bye. Any questions? Just, no questions. Very good. So let's go ahead and um, give me one moment. Uh, I'm going to send you the link over here, uh, Elio, so you can join um, the, the link. To after after uh, this, I have to finish the class. Otherwise, if you talk to me, it's going to be included in the video. So to avoid that, I'm sending you a different link. Okay, so you can join after we finish the class. Okay. Uh, no, it's 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 because I am but I am far away. I am out of the country right now. Ah, and I okay. Having trouble with uh, with the schedule because I am visiting a, a relative and sibling. Uh, my sister sometimes is in home and I don't I am having problem with the with the classes. Mm -hmm. So be in classes. Okay. So they are being meeting, being reunion with people and <laughs> you have to divide your attention into it. Yeah. You have to split yourself in several parts no i totally get you but you know what did you what i what i would recommend to do in this case is to get in contact with i think it's paola she is the one that types in the in the chat i mean that that that, that um, um make announcements in the chat and she's the person in charge of uh, the attendance, right? Okay. So uh, please let her know her, uh, your situation and let's see what, what uh, options she gives you, okay? Because okay. whenever we have those type of problems, right, uh, in order to not having them affecting you, <clears throat> sometimes they propose, you know, some um, options. So let's go ahead and let her know, <clears throat> sorry, and let's see if it's possible to get to a um to a deal with with her right okay, okay. thank you thanks a lot you're welcome you. and i'm sorry that uh you know yeah that you're having that time with your family and this is uh and the class you know it's kind of uh, uh impacting your schedule right but hopefully there will be a solution for that okay very good so i'm going to continue here so i'm going to to move to the previous slide because I haven't gotten there. <clears throat> uh, I think after that, what we have, it's, um, I think it's a reading, but more than that, I would like to focus on noun clauses after B. So yesterday we, we, we talked a little bit about noun clauses after B, right? And, and um, you know that this information, it's important for you to complete one of the exercises that you have, right? So pretty much it, noun clauses, right, are uh, the ones that we mentioned yesterday uh, are part of a sentence that has both a subject and a predicate. As you know, the very first thing that we need to identify whenever we're making up sentences is that we are including our subject and that we're are including our predicate, meaning that we're including subject verb and, you know, everything related to that particular sentence. That is optional in noun clauses after B. So also notice the preposition used in, used in each sentence. Now, guys, what what is the takeaway from this particular, um, you know, section? Well, uh, pretty much what you have to do is to remember that whenever we have a noun clause, right, um, if we have a noun clause with verb B, right, we can omit that particular section uh, of that, um, which is the particle that we need to join the two sentences, that becomes optional. Meaning that sometimes you can use it, sometimes you cannot, it's up to you, it's an option, right? But this one, you have to be very careful that you are dealing with the verb B. If we are talking about different clauses, so my friend, be careful because actually we'll probably need that or you know any other um, linker you know that will help you to join the two ideas together. So take a look at the examples. The only trouble with being a two income family is we don't spend as much time together. 
The big advantage of having grandma at home is she can babysit more. So yesterday we resolved, you know, this exercise in the platform, right? And it's not, it's not a specific thing, guys. I mean, it's not something that has to do with a rule, etc. No, we joined the two sentences together and in some cases, they were together. In some cases, uh, we have the first sentence at the beginning. In some cases, we have the second sentence at the beginning. It will be up to you to decide which is the way you're going to do it, okay? Here we have more examples, right? That in noun classes after B, it's optional, right? Notice the prepositions that I use with uh, the following nouns. An advantage of having an older brother is that or is you always have someone to help you. The best thing about having brothers and sisters is you're never lonely or is that you're never lonely. A problem with having lots of brothers and sisters is that or is you don't get a very big allowance <laughs> because actually the money will be divided among the three, right? Or among all the brothers and sisters. So why is the reason? Why do I omit it? Because the sentence makes sense, makes totally sense without the particle that. That's the reason why. That's the reason why I can remove it because it means the same with the particle and without the particle, okay? So do you have questions about this, guys? Questions about uh, noun clauses? Questions? Okay. If we don't have questions, right, uh, at the end, I think there is like a, like a reading section. I think it's this one, right? And, and I'm going to um, wait to, for you to let me know if you're having uh, any problem or inconvenient in the platform to complete this reading, right? And, and let me know for tomorrow. So for now, I'm going to pass the attendance and I'm going to finish, you know, the class. And then tomorrow, probably we're going to discuss section three. But please do me a favor, do me a favor and go over section one. Take a look at the topics, take a look at the information and write down your doubts, write down your doubts, write down your questions so I can clarify your, your um, all of that tomorrow. So I'm going to stop here, guys. Let me pass the attendance and then we finish with the class. Okay, Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Here. Thank you, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present. Thank you. Um, Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present. Thank you. Uh, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Uh, thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present, teacher. Thank you. Francisco Antonio Sanchez Jovel. Present. Thank you, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present, present teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Maria Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Mendez Alveño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Melendez Morales. Present. Eh, Rodrigo Daniel Melendez Mayen. Rosa Maria del, de Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene Leon López. Present, chair. Thank you, Zulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. Present. Thank you very much. And Rodrigo Daniel, thank you very much. Ahorita.
Okay, guys, so thank you very much for joining today. Let's meet tomorrow. Have a wonderful night. Take care. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye.